a question with, uh, you probably heard us chatting about it before the show actually started, is, is the cross-posting. How, how, do, how does all that work? Because apparently I made three or four posts of the same exact thing this morning. <laughs> What's the best way to do that without all right, the, people's voting power? The cross-posting is not a feature of communities. It's a feature of Steam Peak, and it's an experiment that Jarvi and Asgard is working on. Um, but it's not something that's official. Um, unfortunately, the way it's done, auto voters will have to make some adjustments to be able to detect if it's a cross post. There are ways of doing that on the blockchain. There's a um, field that you can compare to see if it's, um, you look at the original author and original permalink to see if it's a cross post or whatnot. But um, right now, none of the auto voters will support that or be aware of that. So they're going to do book it vote. Um, it also cr creates a lot of issues that I'm concerned with is say, for example, I make a post and then I cross post it to another community. I'm going to get 90% um, 90 of the beneficiaries of this new post. In addition to the original post, then whatever community I sent it to gets 5%. And then the person that cross post it, which would be me as well, would get another 5%. So, there's a way to double dip, um, and uh, it's hard to track. I mean, I don't think a lot of people are going to be aware of that and see that and account for that, especially with the auto voters that are just going to vote normally. So if I cross-post my post to three communities and I have big whales following me, they're going to vote on all three posts by, um, unless if things get changed. So that's something that's going to happen a lot lately. Okay, that brings a new question to my brain, mentioning the beneficiaries is there like an automatic beneficiary attached when you do the cross posting or post in a community itself or how does that yes it that creates work? a post um that if you look at um let me see if i could find an example i had one just a few seconds ago but um the post is actually just a link and then it, your comment and then that's it that's what goes to the blockchain now steam peak um knows this and sees that and it will make it look pretty and make it look like a cross but for everywhere else, it's just going to look like um, somebody just posted um, a link in a comment and that's it. So on the blockchain, if you're using Steemit.com, Beta Steemit, or Busy, or any of those things, it's going to look like a link. And that's look it. like a spammy little crappy shit post, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Understandable. Oh, that's, that's the really... thing that I've been playing with is Steam Peak, so I had not noticed that anywhere else. Yeah, I had it earlier. Um... Let me see if I can switch accounts. Yeah, the beneficiaries. How does how does that work with the beneficiaries? And the, it automatically gives it to the community it's posted in, or, or the way it... beneficiaries work is it'll give ninety percent to the original author, it'll give five percent to whoever cross posts it, and then it'll give five percent to whatever community it's being cross posted to. I believe. I don't think it's the from. I think it's the two, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on that last five percent. Interesting. So, like, if you go to um, Power Creatives, they have a lot of cross posting going on. So, if you want to find a cross post, that's the easiest way to find one as an example. But let me see if I can find one. I can show you what it looks like on the block. Here we go. Here's one right here. Yeah, that's a good question, Pensif. Yeah, Marky said he had concerns about it too. You think that'll be. Encouraging for people to cross post then with, with them getting five percent of their rewards from this is what a cross post looks like. I've just <laughs> dropped two of them in one from Steam Peak and the same one from um Steam Met. Yeah, okay. So that's what it's gonna look like when you see it on the blockchain. Now when sorry, I moved my mic for a second when I was trying okay. to type. Um so when Steam Peak sees it from their UI they're going to actually change into the beautified cross-posted thing that looks really nice and it looks like it's a real cross-post. But on the blockchain, it's really just a simple um, post and that's it. And that post is qualified for posting rewards and all that stuff. And then that's going to be um, one of the concerns that a lot of the auto, or none of the auto voters know how to deal with this. And that can change. They may not change. They probably won't change anytime soon. Um, the other alternative is to make cross post decline rewards, um, but not a lot of auto voters know how to avoid decline rewards either. 
Um, but that's really not a concern of anybody's that they should fix their stuff rather than um, pointing to that. But it's more it. of an experiment to see because it's a really big issue with communities is you can only post to one community. And I think that's a good thing um, because one of the things I really love about communities is being able to give people a title. And if you have multiple communities that a post can be in, you no longer can use that title everywhere. So if I'm in the coconut rock community and I have um, lead coconut eater as my title and I make a post and it happens to make it to trending and anybody that sees that post, regardless if they see my community or not, will see that I'm the lead coconut eater, regardless of if they know about the community, which is I think is awesome for engagement. I think these little titles that are so easy to add and remove makes a big deal and gives a lot of engagement, gives a lot of personalization and ownership. And being able to see those titles in the trending page and in people's feeds, even if they're not a member, is a big thing. So once you allow them to put a post into two communities, you can no longer do that because you don't know which title to show, the first or second community. So the fact that it can only be in one community allows you to do that. But the cross-posting is something that's going to have to be figured out by Steam as well as Steam. Because even on Reddit, that's something that's very common to cross-post things. And the way the blockchain support um, runs now, there's no real built-in functionality to do that. The only way would be to decline rewards or do what Steam Peak's doing and doing beneficiaries or something like that. But that opens up for a lot of... Um, even with the decline of rewards, them. people will still you know, have it in their own. Yes. Kind of. Some um, auto voters are smart enough to avoid decline rewards, but many aren't. And they'll fix that after they, um, if um, cross posting becomes popular, they'll, they'll fix it pretty quickly if they start voting on stuff and it's declined and they start waiting to have voting power. They'll start pressuring people to fix things. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hot topic, cross-posting. They are an experiment, and it's completely um, Steam Peak's doing. Um, I, I'm really, I really love what Steam Peak does. They do a lot of innovation, stuff that hasn't been done in Steam it or Busy it's, or any of the other front ends. My main front end, I've, I've pretty much stopped posting on Steam it and everything I've been doing is on Steam Peak. There's just so much more over there for me to to look at and be involved in. I mean, they've got the analytics and all kinds of cool stuff. So, Yeah, it is really nice. And I do love um, the way Roadscape built communities is any front end can use that functionality. And that's why Steam Peak can use communities with very little effort. I mean, they have to code their interface for it, but they don't have to do anything to make communities work. It's just start using the hive mind servers like everyone else does on Steam it, and they can get that functionally built in. And then they can add more functionality to that like they are doing with cross-posting. Has anybody here used anything besides Steam Peak or Steam It with the community aspect involved yet? Like eSteam or Busy? Is Busy still work? Busy works right now. I don't think they can post images. You have to copy a link of the URL, and they haven't been updated in like a year and a half. And it really irks me that they still have 500k delegation from Steam. Oh that. my gosh, no, let's not go there. <laughs> and what's even worse is, you know, the um, delegation committee completely overlooked them. They didn't enter into it or even submit it. They just were completely ignored. Same with D2. So kind of frustrating because they're not doing anything. Yeah, that brings a couple other questions. What about um, the, the different media? front ends like 3Speak and DTube, uh, Apex and stuff like that, are they, are you able to access the community through those front ends or is that? 3Speak does have some community front end functionality. When you make a post with a video, you can choose a community, but it has to be created through them, which they own the um, account, act. they own the community. They give you admin rights, but there's no keys on the community. When I create my communities, I don't create any keys. I do it with authority only, and that's what they do. So what they do is they give you admin rights, but they still have um, ownership of the community. And that's one of the things that is kind of um, awkward. But when you create a community through 3Speak, if you want to be able to post to that community, you have to create it through them. So you can't take an existing community and then post to it. Not you really. can, but they'll integrate them, but they're taking...
I I requested it three weeks ago, and I still. You're cutting out. Yeah, it's cutting out for the last part of your whatever. I said I I asked for my communities to be integrated three weeks. Still not done. Yeah, I don't know if they have the ability to do that just yet. I know they do because um, I know they can um, change some things. Like if you have a community on three speak, you can get the keys for them. But they do certain things and they remove ownership or something. Um, but the way the process is now is they create it with their ownership and then they give you rights to it, which is fine because um, admin is all you ever need to log in is the most anyways to do 99.9% of what you're doing. The only time you need ownership is if you're creating admin. But unless if they add that functionality into their three speak, then you can't post to your community. So I have like STEM Geeks community that's already created. Um, and if somebody wants to post on it three speak, I would have to um, either give them ownership or somehow get them to add it in there. And so far, I haven't seen them do it, but I know they said they would be able to do it at some point. I see Starkers is here. Maybe he can enlighten us. I know they do have a few communities in there that I think there's like four or five communities that you could post to that they've created through there. I know Steam Leo was in there before, but they took it out and created their own, I think. I'm not sure if Starkers is awake, but he, he would probably be to answer that. So he was in here. Um, now, one thing people need to be aware of, I think, is that communities and tribes are not the same thing, even though some tribes have communities. Just posting to a community is not going to get you any special kind of right. token or anything like that, right? Right. When to um, SMTs come out, that may be um, a change. Um, that cha well, was going change with it. you'll be able to do that. But um, right now, a lot of tribes, at least the ones I'm helping out with, um, have the ability to post to a community at the same time. So if you post through STEM Geeks, Steam Leo, um, through their web site, their, their tribe website, not Steam it, and not um, any of the other stuff. But if you go through like steamleo.com, for example, it'll actually post to the HiveMind community Steam Leo as well automatically. Only if you use their front end. Now, if you make a post on Steemit and you use the Steam Leo tag, that's not going to do it. It has to be through their front end. We, uh, I worked with the guys over there to add that functionality to automatically post to the community. What if you use the Hive tag? Will it then go into the community? Yes, if you add the Hive tag, it'll go in there automatically. But it has to be the first tag. Okay. But what I wanted to you know, because like with this, I don't think it will. Thing, I think. You know, you don't think you only get one community and that's it? Because with the cross-posting, obviously people want to post in more than just one community. So you think maybe adding two or three communities to you know, where you could possibly post in would be beneficial? Or From what I've seen from the discussions, that's not going to happen. But um, cross-posting functionality is something that would be worth. But the whole point of communities is to have one post in one community and that's it. But there's so many different communities. I mean, look at all the people right in here. We're representing probably a dozen different ones, just the people in this room right now, easily. <laughs> there are, but if you look at um, the people um, that are posting to tribes, you can see that you're using like 15 different tribe tags. Many of them are unrelated. Um, once you start allowing to post to any community, um, people are going to just abuse it like crazy. Well, that makes sense. Because if you look at the tribes, you see... People are posting, like, they'll post um, Splinterlands post, and they'll post it into Steam Leo, into STEM Geeks, into Lifestyle, into Pot, the, the weed cache or whatever. And they'll post it into, like, everything. And they just hope that they don't get blocked or flagged. And most of the time, most of the moderators don't really moderate it. So um, they're allowed through, and they get tokens for all of us. Okay, I have, I have another, another question. Since you're here and I've been playing around with communities a little bit, I mean, it may be an easy question, it may not, but when you're in your community, say you're an admin or a moderator, and you go to the settings, there's a particular spot down there where it says rules. Now, what, what exactly are 
you able to do with the rules? I mean, can you specify like certain tags that will appear in your community, or how how does that work? Can we the rules are just rules or? the rules are just a, a markdown functionality for a community. Let me find one, and I'll show an example. Um, when you go to a community, if you look at my community here, the rules show up right under um, right between language and here. So if you add any rules, they'll just show up here as text. It's kind of like the description. Like if you take um, some of the, let me find, uh, here we go. Here's an example that has all of it. But not it's, much, but. It's not an absolute. I mean, it's. No. Yeah, it's just a description. Yes. So, it's so that. You see, it just adds some formatting. It makes it so a little you easier. Can, you can add links in there in the description and rules then? You said you can I'm not that. sure if you can use links. I know some of the markdown is prohibited, um, but it's basically to allow you to create rules, but it makes it real easy to format. You just do one rule per line, and it'll automatically add the numbers in front and add the header rules, and it's just formatting. But it means nothing. It's, if you look at Reddit, they do the same thing. Like If you look at um, any of the um, subreddits, they all have a section of rules, and I think that's where it came from is uh let me see if i can find an example uh, this one doesn't have one but trying to pull the best of both worlds so to speak into there you go like this is a subreddit section on subreddit uh, on reddit and you can see that they have like um and they have like links to the things it doesn't work quite like that because it doesn't allow you to free flow like this it's going to do like a one, two, three, four, or five for each line, and it's not free flow. You can use a description to do that, but I'm not sure if you can hyperlink and add links in there in the description. Yes, yeah, but I'm asking because I know over there on Reddit you can add stuff. To... I can try real quick and see if I can do it in my community, yeah. but let me edit it now. Yeah, see if it works. For those who don't know, Rondon is a witness. I haven't voted you yet, but I will. <laughs> You're good people. Who else has questions about communities and stuff? Please work. See okay, see, it doesn't works. work, which is what I did. It doesn't? No. So there's no, no linking? It, it's not full functionality, and that's something we were talking about before. The description oh, that, is really just Is that just a Steam Peak thing, or is that a... You know, that is a Steam that, it thing. Steam it itself, okay. And the interface can change that as well. But you want something that's uniform between all interfaces. Um, but the rules, like if I put in rules, like I'll put some rules in here. Um, be good. Be good, healthy. not healthy. I'll just add some food. Food on, snack. Run down, so I just, I just put in some simple rules. And if you look at what it looks like, cause it's just this. That's all it is. It's, it's just formatting. <laughs> oh, God. So, no links yet? No, okay. yet. Um, okay. I'll add that in the thing to mention because we did talk about it. I'm not sure um, where that is at this point. It might be something that's in development or something. Okay. I have a question about the subscribers, active users. What what exactly determines whether or not a person is an active user or a subscriber? Because it would seem that all subscribers are active users. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to have subscribed to begin with. But active users, I believe, is anybody that has a current post that's within pay. And that could be a comment or a post once it's within seven days. So that's basically any... Um, like on you get that activity in the last seven days. Like on Steam as a whole? No, on your community. Within the community, okay. Yes. So there's 159 subscribers to STEM Geeks, but only 19 people have made a comment or post in the last seven days that are out for payout. In okay, well, then what would be the difference between active users and interactions? Because would interactions include comments? Interactions would be individual. They would be like, if I made five comments, that would be five interactions. Oh, okay. So but it would be five, um, one interactive user. From what I can tell, the cross-posting doesn't count as pending rewards, right? It would, because it's a regular post in terms of community. Well, so I've got one cross... like, like to the Alliance, I've got 
the two that are in there because we just started it and find the dollar cross posted one and then latino posted one actually in the community and it says there's only for pending rewards if you cross post like say for example you have a post in stem Geek and you cross post it to um steam stem for example and uh, what will happen is it won't show up in stem geeks but under um, steam stem it'll show up as a, an additional post so it would be a pending rewards and it'll be an active post under that community but under stem geeks it would know nothing about it because it's really just a new post under the steam stem community it's really just a post think of it exactly like a post it just um steam peak does some um ui magic to make it look cool and they're the ones that create the actual post so they put some metadata that you can't see on the post but really all it is is just another post that can get votes it can get flags it can be re-steamed it shows up in whatever community it's put in and that's about it it's really just a unique post sorry kdf it's a brand new mic i'm still playing with the settings on it so bear with me <laughs> we're talking about um communities and cross posting with steam peak yeah we were talking about uh, different front ends that have uh communities attached to them and if uh, the medias were going to be doing that as well like three speak and dtube and you came up yeah so we were curious how you three were going speak about did that. Come up. Uh, three speak did come up because they were asking about if you could do communities in three speak and i mentioned that there are some um, communities that are in there but it doesn't work with any communities that haven't been created by you or been added by you after the so the front end themselves have to add all the communities is that what you're saying i'm confused no just three speak three speak um maybe to add it. maybe we monitor uh, starkers yeah. could actually address that yeah yeah come on. by all means come on You either have to enable push to talk or shadows will make you a on air guest. I just gave him on air. Oh, you did. Can you hear me? Yeah, Hopefully. talk to us. Amazing. So, with FreeSpeak, we had communities before Steamed launched the beta. And that's why a lot of the community stuff we have on FreeSpeak is still based on our own database. So, we're slowly migrating um this system to use the bridge api that steamit and uh, hive might now provide and once that is fully completed you will be able to use absolutely any community on steam also on freespeak without paying a fee or us adding anything manually so right now it's on request because we haven't finished the integration but once that is done uh any community on Steam is also automatically available on FreeSpeak. Sweet. No, one of somebody, either Snook or Shadow, said that was the, the time frame on the community aspect of it was a little slow. Is that something else y'all are working on too? Or? Mm, what do you mean with? I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't. Do a whole lot of when it, it was uh it's taken a while to get the integration done that i asked for uh uh yeah i mean we we are completely migrating from completely database based communities to the steam communities so yeah i think uh a week or two more weeks will be required but then we should have tested this and it should be rolled out Excellent. Thank you. Who else has questions about, about community? I have more if nobody else wants to ask any more. Mark's here to answer. Uh, I had grab his arm and pull him in. He's here waiting on your questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marky, did I understand that you when you said Active posters are the number of people that are posting in that particular community, or are they just the active subscribers that are posting anywhere? The active poster should be anybody who has a post or a comment in the community that is within payout. 
So within seven days. Oh, would include a comment as well? It should. I believe I'm about 99% sure it does. Okay, because I'm just looking at the Ramble, and the Ramble's showing 14 active posters, but there's only two people that have put posts in there. So Has they, there been a lot of comments be from other people? That's, that's what it probably is. Yeah, that's what it should be. So if you make a comment in a community, then it's going to make you an active poster. Okay, I have a question. Can you log in as the community itself and make posts as the community in the community, or does it have to? No, yeah, you can do that. Uh, yeah, it's just a after, regular after account, but I don't yeah. recommend it. But Why not? And you will require to log in as the Hive account whenever you want to change admin permissions, because only the owner, aka the Hive account, can do that. The Hive account generally has zero Steam power. Um, it's a random account that's just created to manage it. Um, and if you see, I pushed for um, changing the way communities are listed. Like if you look in um, Stem Geeks, for example, this is one thing I really wanted to do is you don't see a Hive account here. There is a Hive account behind this community. Before, it used to be listed as an owner, and I hated that because no one uses that account. It's just it's just it's still is on Steam Geek. It'll list the hive as the owner still on. Yeah, Steam. and I don't like that. I wish it was. I don't want to have that there. And I push to get this removed because really the only thing that matters is the admin. The owner is just who created the account. Um, it's a dummy account that's just used to handle the hive, and that's it. And it's never logged in again unless if you have to add or remove an admin. That's the only time you need that account. I was no. I was just going to ask that about the admins because I, I manage a couple other ones too. And I was like, I can't make these people admins. How do I do that? And thank you. That answers my question yeah, there. You use the hive minor. Now, for example, if you look at my communities, um, anything after like the STEM geeks, a lot of the communities I've created after that, they all have no hive account at all. They're created differently and they just use posting authority and all that stuff. So they're not, they don't even exist. But uh, for the this particular one, it did have a Hive account, and this was is hidden now because it's really useless data. No one wants to see Hive one six seven five five owner, right. and now it's showing up on all of them. That the was my big I, worry was, was with the t t tags and stuff. You know, the, yeah, the, I think it's bad enough it that we have. Shows, I'm glad it shows the the Hive name now, or community name instead of you know yeah. Hive x x x x x. That's a big improvement. I think it's bad enough that the Hive tag is in the URL, and I really am pushing to get that removed. But another reason why I like this feature is because now if you look at um, exploring communities, you can see who owns the community. And it shows this is the other feature I pushed to get added, is you could see all the owners, because I want to know who created the community. I don't care about the owner account, the Hive account. I just want to know the admin. That That's 99% of the time that's the person that created the account or created that community. And that's important to me. Like, I want to know who's in charge of the community when I look through communities. But wouldn't so that wouldn't be the, the owner then? Wouldn't, yeah. the, wouldn't the Hive be remain in the, uh, the URL in case you change the name on it? Because if you what change you the name of the community, it's going to be chaotic in the, the yes, URL. That's why it doesn't do it right now. There's other reasons too. But like once you start using names, what will happen is now if I want to have, for example, um, three speak, I can snipe it before they get it. And now I can name squad it. And it adds that problem. Like for example, Steam would be a big one, even though you can make um, Bob Steam community. It's still there's certain names that are popular, like Coca-Cola or um, gaming or something like that. And by being able to have the name in the URL, you have to handle those nine name sniping now everything has to be unique which isn't a case right now because it's just a number the other problem is what happens if you change it what happens if you're like my coconut rock community has changed many times it was coconut rocks it's been crimson clad rock um it switched to marky's um, fan club and i've used it for testing to change to all different names what about all those links um before if you look at banjo i think banjo is in here right so if you look at um, Banjo and I do Hive Coconut and I do Hive Crimson, 
these both will show up and they're both the exact same community and neither one of these are accurate anymore. It's actually Marquis fan club from for both of these communities. Um, all these communities are actually the been now, is renamed. That banjo not fetching properly, or is that? It's just the way it shows up on the blockchain. It, it, I don't know exactly what his query did. We talked about it before, but it's just the way the query goes, and it doesn't differentiate the changes. So there's like four or five communities that show up in the search, but it's really only one, and it's neither of these. It's a completely different community now. I've changed it. Now, what happens if you have links and posts? Like, you create a post linking to my community, and then I change the name of the community, which changes that URL. That causes another problem. So these URLs with numbers suck, but there's a lot of problems that have to be almost, solved before we can go to that. To have. The other problem is, what about the beta site? A lot of people use the beta link. And a lot, um, a lot of the links were linking to beta, to the beta community links and stuff like that. So that is another problem as well. Because now it's on steamit.com. Those beta links won't work forever. That's sad. Can't he just point the, uh, uh, the can't beta just dot it? Yeah, Can't just redirect it, anything from beta and redirect it. Right, but what happens if there's a new beta and things change? Mm, good point. That was one of the things about the... Uh, that. Yeah, see the coconut rocks? That community, if you click on that community and you click on the crimson rocks, both of those will take you to Marky's fan club, which I put trolls and spammers that harass me um, into that community. <laughs> but neither of those are accurate. Accurate. Is there any plan to put a header on the community page on steamit.com? Yes, that's something that's been talked about and is, has a lot of favoritism too. Um, so you Good. can kind of have like a cover image, kind of like what you do in your profile. Yep. That's something that a lot of us are pushing for. As well as other things like avatar, so the community itself self will have an avatar. So when you go to explore communities, there'll be a little picture there as well. And then when you go to the community, there'll be kind of like a header. You know when you go to Steam, it um, when it's not logged in, it has that big thing that says make money or your voice is worth something, and they keep changing it. You'll have something like that where you have a little bit above the fold um, image where you can put a backdrop. That's what we're looking at adding at some point. It's been Good. brought up, and it sounds like it's something that they want to do. So I'm pretty confident that'll get added at some point. All these banjo links have the beta in front of it. Yes. Um, he hasn't updated I, yet. I, I, I created mine after the beta, so I'm... Yeah, just... but it's just um, banjo is set up to point to the beta link. No matter what's going to point to the beta. Eventually, link. he'll fix it and change it, I'm sure. It's just that's how it was built for. But that'll get changed when he decides to do that. The um, cement link forum is pretty new. Interesting. And the one thing that's really great about communities, and I, I don't know how many people know this, but communities is based off of HiveMind, which is um, a database. It's, it's not a blockchain part of, um, it's not like CMD where it's, and um, RPC server. So a lot of changes can be made to communities on the fly without doing hard. So um, the, the whole point of communities was to get it out the door, get it out there, get people using it, and then start iterating. So it can advance very quickly um, going forward. Um, I know one of the things that they're talking about doing is doing emoji and being able to thumbs up, thumbs down, smiley face post without having to vote or anything like that. Um, and do that with comments too. And a lot of that functionality was based on communities being here. So once communities is out and stable, they could start working on the polish parts of it. And that functionality ideally is going to be all done at the blockchain level um, via HiveMind. So if SteamPeak wants to take that functionality, they don't have to recreate it. Like SteamPeak has done a lot of things. They've done um, the promotion functionality, which is completely independent to theirs but they built it in a way that other people can use it. Um, but this functionality, as long as it's done in a way that it's in Hive, then everyone can use it no matter what front end it is, which yeah, it's mostly... One thing I see on Steam Peak right now is you kind of brushed on, they have the featured communities. Is that like a promotional type deal or what? That is an experiment right now. So you'll see that it'll feature communities that have no post in it. So it's really experimental right now. 
I actually talked to him about that today. It's just they're they're testing a lot of functionality and they're really doing way more than any of these other front ends are doing. And it's really cool. And um, their mindset is to build things that are reusable. For example, they built um, burning promotions so you can get higher ranked on Steam Peak, which is something um, that we've been talking about putting on Steam. It is being able to burn Steam and then being shown up in the trending rather than under promoted, which no one even looks. Steam Peak built that functionality that we've been waiting to get added um, into Steam Peak. And they built it in such a way that if another front end wants to piggyback off of it, they can do that. Which is really thoughtful of them. I think that's really cool. Yeah, that is cool. They didn't build it in a way that just works for them and everyone else has to build their own functionality, which we have a lot of that. Like, for example, guest account. Every DAP has to make their own functionality for guest accounts. There's nothing that uniform like if you make a guest accounts for steam peak and then splinterlands makes it there's no linking there's no way um but steam peak tries to make things that are uniform and are able to be reused by other parties which i think is really cool so if it gets popular in steam peak and then steam it wants to pick up on it they can integrate with it or vice you mean versa. like the badges yes stuff like that i think that's really I, I really do appreciate how they do that when they take build functionality like that. Yeah, that that's I'm not sure if you're referring to the same thing with the badges or not, but if I go to my profile now on Steam Peak, I've got some little squares underneath there. It's like one is top one hundred witness, one is Solaris member, one is the Ramble the Shade. How do how do you get those badges? Is that I don't know. I have to talk that to them. you or um, I can explain that to you if you don't mind. Yes, please do. So <clears throat> You, all you have to do is create a Steam account uh, that is named batch hyphen and then uh, six random numbers. That's how you start. Then you log in as that account on Steam Peak and set a display name, what your batch would be called, and a description, and you upload a profile image. And then all you have to do to assign that batch to people is follow people with that batch account. Oh, that's awesome. So, he, like I said, they make everything so other people can use it and build on it. That's what I really love about Steam Peak. <laughs> Sweet. Exactly what I was saying. They do everything like that. Rather than, it's really difficult though. A lot, when you're developing things, it's hard enough to add features, but it's even harder to add features that can be used in other ways rather than just getting the job done. And I really do love how Steam Peak does. So it's there's one example. other little feature with those badges that is kind of cool. If you click on the badge. You get the feed of everybody who's received that badge. That's yep. awesome. I really that's love that. So that's like a whole new community in itself then, huh? Yep. Sweet. It's kind of like a... Um, now. <laughs> if you look at Reddit, they have badges. I'll show you an example. And badges are really popular. Like, uh, let me pull up my main account here. Because I have a ton of badges on... Uh, badges? Badges? I guess we, we don't need no stinking badges. badges. <laughs> <laughs> are you Mark talking has about its own very own badge, right? Are you talking about um, what do you call it? Um, what's that called? Um, bad boys. No. When in the convenience store, when they're talking about the badges. No, I mean on free speak, you have your very own badge. So, like, this is badges on uh, Reddit. And I'm mostly. I don't have a lot of badges because I haven't worked on a lot of things, but I've been there for a while. So these badges are pretty popular. 12-year club, dang, man. I love Reddit. I'm still a huge fan of Reddit, even though I don't use it as much. But That badge doesn't show up on my, uh, my thing, though. Ah, that's not showing up either. Is that specific to Steam? Peak, then I'm assuming Steam it doesn't have the badges, or since it's a actual badges account. are specific to Steam Peak, yes, and the one okay. I posted are specific to Free Speak. Oh, okay, so you okay. built the same function that they did, basically. Yeah, Similar. but, but it's proprietary, right? Yeah. Okay. But uh, you can receive the badges someone has on Free Speak using our API, so. So you built it in a way that it could be used too. By other things. 
Yes. The way he said it is, is that um, you have to create a badge account, and once you're followed by it, Zippy, then then they give you the badge on Steam Peak or Three Speak. I'm not entirely sure how theirs works. But... It's pretty awesome. It, it, all this little stuff, in, and that's why I love community so much and why I was, I was pushing it so much. These little things are what create ownership and create um, a feeling of belonging, and these things are what keep people interacting and being involved in things. Like that's why I'm excited about emojis, even though it's stupid and meaningless, but it makes a big difference. It, it makes it fun. It makes people feel like they're part of something. So I've had a big fear that the, it would create a bit of a separation with people having to choose just a single community to post into. But with the cross posting aspect, I'm not so sure that'll. Yeah, the single post, but um, single community thing is something that has been discussed and. It's definitely um, not as simple as what it is. It's there's some good things, there's some bad things. It's not perfect, um, and it was a choice. It was a objective choice to do that. But the um, cross posting functionality is something that's going to be worked on. But Steam Peak went ahead and did something themselves. Good on. And that, that, like I said, that's why I love Steam Peak because they they not only build functionality that can be reused, but they're always innovating, which a lot of the front ends have stopped innovating ages. As much as I love communities. Zippy, um, Zippy Steam is a marathon. You know, uh, We're all here for the long haul. There's no quick in and out. If, if you got to take time for personal leave or whatever, we'll still be here. <laughs> Okay, who else has questions? We've got about 10 more minutes. Drop them in there or come on voice, whatever you need to do. Uh, there's a question up here for newcomers uh, from Pensif. You think it'll be more explanation needed to differentiate between the tribes and communities and badges and stuff when people start onboarding, especially if they're using Steam Peak at this point? Should there be more like in the FAQs or like an introductory email they should get? Or do you think it'll be confusing for them? Marky? What's that? I didn't thought you were talking about someone else. What for, you for, confusing? For, new, for new users, I mean, do you think there'll be more explanation needed to differentiate between tribes and communities and badges and all this new stuff that's... I think most new users are going to only see the community aspect. It takes a little digging before you find out about tribes. And I, I think, uh, I've said this many times, I hate tribes. I have one, I hate them. But I do really, really appreciate what they've done for Steam is they've given people a place of ownership, something to do, something where to belong. Um, and it's saved a lot of Steam users that were going to leave, or Steam users that were going to leave. It kept them here and gave them something to do and be part of. And I really, really appreciate that. And I love that aspect of it. I really would rather have had communities with SMTs. It just wasn't happening in a time frame that was attractive to most of us. So tribes came out to solve that problem. Well, are you are you keen on SMTs? How, how will how soon I, can we expect those, and how will they be integrated to represent you know different communities? Once the communities are made, do we already have that ability to access SMTs since we've I think um, SMTs would have been a game changer three years ago when they were talked about. Now it's just going to be a thing. Um, but if you look at Steam Engine, you can see it's really popular. There's a lot of tokens. It, it's it's a big thing, um, but it's going to be a big thing for Steam. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a big thing that's going to drive people to come to Steam. I don't think um, all these SMTs are going to be like, oh, you got to use it Steam. It's not going to be like ERC-20, which is huge news for Ethereum. I think it's going to be, right now, it's or, going to be focused on... TRX-20 on Tron. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, I'd hope so, but I have a feeling that we were a little late to the party. Um, but combine it with communities, I think it's going to make a big deal. It's going to allow us to have tribe-like functionality on Steam natively, first layer. Um, another thing I, I want well, to try doing... Right there. Do you think communities will lead to the decline of tribes? I mean, do you think Steam Engine will lose? Potentially, it depends Steam on or... <laughs> what functionality it has. If it falls behind the functionality of Tribes, then no. But Tribes has some issues um, that I'm not going to get into. But um, if it 
is able to keep up with the functionality that Tribes has, then yes, it's going to decline um, Tribes because it's all first layer and it's all built in. But um, if Tribes can do things that communities can't, then maybe not. I think it's going to be hard for a lot of Tribes Steam to move Engine over. Do you think maybe Steam Engine will work with us and let people list their SMTs on the Steam Engine too? Or is yeah, that going to be said, totally um, different? He said that will be possible. It was going to be like five Bitcoin to do that or something like that. Five so, Bitcoin? I think it was something like that or 5,000 Steam. Or, and he, I noticed he edited the post and changed it to be a lot less. But he was comparing it to a 20 Bitcoin listing fee for Bitrix or something like that, which isn't a fair comparison because Steam Engine, if you take the daily volume, is less than a single transaction on Bitrix. Yeah, so it's, not not a fair say, comparison. it's not like he's doing that business that they're doing <laughs> yeah so a, little, yeah. a lot of um tribes don't make much money at all it, it's like pennies on a day or a couple dollars maybe total um, a good example is if you take um this is a cool functionality if you um haven't seen it before leo is one of the best tribes for performance on steam and if you look at it That's per awesome. day if all the top 10 posts sold for the day like if the top 10 trending posts actually took their tokens and sold it on the exchange they'd make 21 and a half dollars that's the top 10 posts paid out on leo are only worth around 21 and a half dollars now if you look at the other tribes what about like, like pal net you like yeah you look at pal it's going to be much lower like i said leo has done really well pal it's two dollars and three cents so the top 10 posts on pal only have made two dollars and three cents or thirty six cents combined if they sold it on exchange right now. But if you take um, this is a funny one, SCT because it's pumped so hard. This at one point um, five hundred six ninety dollars because this token is pumped. But if those tokens were sold instantly, the price would drop thirty eight percent instantly. And at some point, this was like 90 But still, that's over $100. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, it's an interesting thing. If you look at the tribes, a lot of it looks great. But if you look at the numbers, it's very small potato. You have all this fussing about earning these tokens and fighting over them and stuff. And in the end, it's really small numbers if you compare it to Steam. But there are some tribes. A lot of the tokens don't really have a functionality. They really do. Is earned. Sell them. Right. They when they have more practical application, then I think tokens, and I'm hoping that's what SMTs do, is you know give people some sort of incentive other than just throwing it on as a tag to get use them. But sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was that's fine. Yeah, and it's Starkers over there. <laughs> but but yeah, you 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 don't think that the communities are gonna put a knock in the tribes' popularity or? It's hard to tell. It depends on when SMTs come out, um, and it depends if there's an easy path to go from a tribe to a community. Otherwise, a lot of these communities are going to be stuck in uh, a lot of these tribes are going to be tr stuck in tribes mode and never be able to move over to community because it's not easy. It's not easy to move the proof of brain model, move over the current distribution, um, the exchange of token swap. All that stuff is going to be extremely difficult to do. Yeah, some communities so there are already tribes, tribes, and if they go for the SP, a lot of these cool? tribes are going to end up being legacy, I think, and they're just going to be out there that because there's no easy way for average Joe to move their community over. And if communities don't have um, SMTs and communities combined don't have attractive functionality, they may not be a reason. To. All right, it's hard to tell. Will Steam be moved to a utility token? That's been talked about a lot. Um, when SMTs come out, that is a possibility. I don't see it happening right away, but there is a lot of talk about it. And um, I don't know if people understand what that means, but a utility token means that it won't have a proof of brain. Steam will no longer give out inflation, no longer give out rewards for uh, making posts and stuff like that, and that would all be handled by SMTs. I think that's a big change in the current state of of how things are, it's hard to say. I mean, still be able to swap it for SPDs on an internal market then, or what? Um, it depends on what it is. Yeah, you can trade it. You would always be able to trade it. It'd be a tradable token, but 
It just wouldn't have inflation. So you wouldn't so I like, earn. I like earning my steam and power. No. <laughs> yeah, you would still earn stuff, but it would be an SMT. Like SMT would be a steam. It. So if you post on Steam, making a blog post, the proof of brain will um, distribute Steam it tokens that are SMT. Hmm. Got a couple more minutes. Anybody else have some questions? You think that would make the price of Steam go up? In theory, it should, but it would also mean that people like um, Bernie, myself, Block Trades have a lot of Steam. And um, if you're not making money, um, distribute, um, making rewards or curating or all that stuff, what's the point of holding more than 100 tokens or 1,000 tokens or whatever? It would depend on um, what the utility is. If there's a utility that's useful, like Binance has a token that's exactly like what Steam would become, and they do really well. They, they've they created a lot of use cases for it. Um, it's very popular and, and valuable, but a lot of them are not. So it, depend on what that utility is. Like if it costs three steam to create an SMT, then that's it. Well, then you need three steam and you're done buying steam. So it's a really, um, it, it really depends on how things go and what those utilities are. Because that's not going to be enough to make the, the token valuable. It's not going to make people run to the store to buy steam just so they can buy one SMT. Would you still be earning it on like for post rewards or would that drop to strictly SPD too? Um, if, if oh, no, it wouldn't be SBD at all like because curation. SBDs depend on inflation. It would be an SMT, like a um, a steam and SMT or whatever, or a community would have their own SMT. That's if we went to a utility token. That was the discussion they had: is they would remove inflation from steam and then do everything via SMTs. Huh. Well, appreciate you, Mark Key coming and answering my questions and everybody's questions. I'm sure we'll have more as time progresses. It's about that time. Thank you, everybody, for coming to Words with Witty. Any other? We'll take a couple more questions. Anybody have some real quick? Yes? No? I have a non-related question. Unrelated? Um, Mark, Mark, do you play poker? <laughs> I have played poker, but I do not play poker. I like it. I just never had time. I've played a little bit on SPL and stuff like that, but I really don't play much at all. Mm -hmm. You should probably try logging up to Procino Poker. That's the continuation of SPL. There's a couple of big games coming up in a couple of weeks. What is it called now? Procinopoker.com. Oh, Procino. So um, Tuck went with them. Um, yeah, I knew they were close friends, and I know they were working together. I am familiar with Procino. That's um, ATS David and I believe Guilty Parties. Yeah, guilty. guilty. And I know David. Tuck was helping them out and stuff like that. I've talked to Tuck for a long time about the um, SPL <laughs> stuff like that. Big fan of Tuck. I like him. Uh, so funny, Zeke. But yes, thank you everybody for coming today. We're going to wrap it up. It's Friday, so once again, be careful out there. Thanks, Marky, again for coming. And everybody sure else. Be safe out there. We see you again here next week, maybe. Waity out. See you guys later.